Okay, shalom, dear friends. Let's talk about Hanukkah. And let's talk about the real story of Hanukkah. What is Hanukkah really all about? What is Hanukkah? And what's the real story of Hanukkah? So, I'll give you the basic version of the story of Hanukkah. Because we're about to have this big party for eight crazy nights. And uh, what are we really doing? And what's really going on? So the simple answer is that about 2300 years ago, here in the land of Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, we were taken over and made into a vassal state by the wicked ancient Greek empire who was, that was run by the wicked king Antiochus. If you want to know all about him, you come and my kids will sing you all the songs about he was a wicked king and the decrees that he put upon us during that time, things that I don't even want to mention right now, very, very bad decrees against the nation of Israel, and they started to take over and to add their philosophies into the land of Israel. It became a state, it was run by the Hellenists, and many of Kalal Yisrael started to follow after those ideologies. And they started to spread their ideas. And they started to invite us to their gymnasiums. And they started to give out pamphlets about some of their ideas. And they wanted us to join their Facebook pages. And their, they started to tweet different uh, propaganda. And we started to, you know, get involved. It looked, you know, it's interesting. Very appealing. Very alluring. And we were moving in that direction. And what was that direction? That direction was essentially completely involved in the body. That was the idea of the Olympics. And really more than that, that the body is something that I worship. And we'll get back to that. And we started to get uh, pulled into it. So that was what's called the Yavanim the ancient Greeks, and then those who started to be pulled after that were called the Mityavnim. And uh, they had a few decrees that they, they had a problem with learning Torah, so they said you can't learn Torah. Then they said Shabbos, oh, no Shabbos. They didn't like the idea of having a new month and being able to sanctify their month, let's get rid of that one. They had another problem with Brismila, the circumcision, let's get rid of that one. And sadly, certain people actually tried to reverse their bris, don't think about it too much, it sounds painful, with weights and hooks to actually pull the skin back over to make themselves not look like they were circumcised anymore, to be able to hang around the gymnasiums and the locker rooms, you know, with the boys, and fit in to that crowd, and to wear those jerseys like the, like the Greeks said. And at a certain point, a small group of very committed Jews, named the Hashmanayim, a group of priests, Baruch Hashem, said enough is enough. And they got up. And these were not exactly fighting men, these were men that were living in the houses of learning. And they got up with their, with their, with their cheder ochels, plastic forks, and their, and their chulant ladles, and they mamish ran after the entire Greek Syrian Empire and their elephants and their artillery and their tens of thousands. And a fierce battle raged. It's hard to even imagine this, but the battle was tens, hundreds of thousands of armed men against a small group, a family of priests. And we won the war. We won the battle, but the battle was not miraculous. Why not? Because every single time that they would shoot an arrow, we ducked. Every time that we would shoot an arrow, it hit. And the entire war is going on, and this small group of maybe 13 people are going and dis dismantling the Greek Syrian Empire. Of course, there was a famous hero, Yehudis, who she gave the general some, some, nice, some nice cheese, some good stuff, you know, the good stuff, like the, the blue stuff. And he got very thirsty. Oh, you, you're thirsty? I have some, a beverage for you. Some nice yayin, some wine. What happened after that? 
He got a little bit too uh, involved in the wine, and that was it. I'll leave the rest for you guys to look up. And once the leader was uh, scared, they all fled. And you know what happened after? We went into the temple, into the Kaidish. We went into the holy temple, and we wanted to light the menorah. We wanted to light, but was there any oil to light? There was no oil. Because the Yavanim, they made all the oil contaminated. They opened up all the bottles, and they put their philosophies contaminating that pure oil. There was nothing that was sealed. And we were so sad until you know what happened. We found one vial, one jar, with the chayis m'shel kain gadol, with the seal of the high priest. And we lit that. You know how much it was supposed to light for? For one day. And how many days did it last? Okay. Eight days. We had enough time to go get the oil and come back. It was amazing. And there it was not from nature. That was above nature. It was above nature. Oil that's supposed to last for one day doesn't last for eight days. And it was amazing. And we made these days, days of praise and giving thanks. And now we light the Chanukiyas to remember that. And we say Hallel. And we eat our donuts and our latkes. And we spin the dreidel, which we'll talk about tomorrow. And it's wonderful. And we love it. It's great. But Chavon, what's really going on? I mean, let's say it this way. I appreciate that Hashem did a miracle for the, for the war, of course. Even though you know the ancient Greeks didn't actually want to kill us. Unlike Haman. You know, Haman, if you were a Jew, exterminated. Didn't matter. You could have a fourth cousin's brother's sister on the father's side. Any connection, that's it. There was no option to live. But according to the Yavan and the ancient Greeks, you could live. But with our philosophy. If you adopt our philosophy, you live. If you don't, uh, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. We're going to deplatform you. We're going to start to drive you out. We're going to... You, you understand what I'm talking about. It's not going to be good. And we had to get up and we had to, we had to say no more. But the question is, so what does this have to do with me today? I understand that Hashem made a miracle that a, a, a vial of oil that should have been lit for one day lasted for eight days. That's very nice. And that we won the war. That's amazing. But what does that have to do with me? In Tav Shin Ap, a Pei Aleph, 2020, going into 2021, what does that do with me? With all my anxiety. What does it have to do with me, with all of my, my, my challenges and me getting on in, into the, into, going into the train and going to a job that I don't like and a dead end situation and, and my, my girlfriend and I in a big fight and I'm having a hard time to, connecting to, to Shabbos and I, I don't even really you know, like this stuff and connect to it anyways and I'm having a hard time with, with this, that and the other and I, you know, rent is a whole other problem and I have questions and I'm depressed. It's cold outside. Wish I was in the Bahamas. How is Hanukkah somehow going to help me now? How is it going to be relevant to me now? How am I going to tap into Hanukkah now, today? So my friends, now is the time for the real story of Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the festival of lights, right? It's all about light. It's all about lighting candles. So let's talk a little bit about light. What is light? It's a funny thing. What is light? You know, we, we talk about light, and, but what is it? I mean, what, what is light? You know, we even speak this way about other people. We say, he's got a lot of light on his face. He's shining. You ever have that, well, that bride? She's shining. What do you mean by that? That, that, that they're shining? Like, your face is like, it's like, it's shining, bro. It's so alive. Does that mean they put too much coconut oil on their face? And it's like a, a gleam, a glare. It's like, you know, OD on the cocoa oil. Is that what it is? It's like just the light, like, hitting down just right. It's like, wow, they caught her eye in just the right way. When you say that they're shining, they have a lot of light. That there's, there's a glow. You're glowing, bro. It's like you got a glow. What is that? What are we describing? When we say that there's a light on your face, ki or panecha, what's this light? What is it? 
Well, you should know when you say that somebody has a glow, and what is that glow? That glow is something that you like. When you see somebody shiny, you like that. You feel attracted to that. There's something about somebody who has a shine that you, I want to, I want to, it's like an allure. There's a light in their eyes. There's something that I, I can't describe it. It's undescribable, but I, but I, but I want to be connected to it. I, I, I want to know you. I want to, what do you mean, know me? Like the sum total of, you know, you know all my, my body limbs and my personality? No, it's more than that. It's something I, I can't put my finger on, but it's, it's there and, and, it, and I, want, I want to be close to it. And I, and I like that. You know, imagine you have a wedding, a beautiful wedding. You know, the way that we do weddings, the first time that the bride and groom might ever be together alone is in what's called the cheder yichud, the special room where they go alone for the first time as husband and wife after they come from the chuppah. And you know, we have a halacha, we have a room that a husband and wife have to have something called a kituba. You guys know about that, a ksuba? A marriage certificate. It's not like a marriage certificate from the, from the town hall. It says, oh, it's okay, so-and-so got married. The ksuba actually outlines the responsibilities that the husband has for his wife. It's gonna take care of her financially. He's going to provide, you know, put some meat in the chulant. He's going to provide her with new clothing. By the way, it's expensive for all the holidays, and we have a lot. So I hope you guys have the means. And that includes new jewelry and matching tichels and shoes and the whole package. Yeah, it's expensive to be a, a Ben Tyra. And other things that has to be provided. And that's a document that's binding. And we hope she never has to take it out and say that something's lacking here, God forbid. But it's something that he knows that I'm getting involved in this relationship and it's serious. I'm going to take care of you. Not only do I love you. It's a very funny word, love. I'm connected to you, but I'm going to make sure that I have the responsibilities of taking care of you are in place. Now back to our new bride and groom, and they're sitting in this private room. They've never been alone. They're sitting in a private room together. They lock the door. They just came down from the chuppah. And, and they're looking deep into each other's eyes. For the first time, as husband and wife, and, and they're probably holding each other. And then they're going to kiss. And at that moment, the husband says, I just, I want you to know, you know, I know Rachel, Rachel, that, and I've just, I've been working a lot on making sure that, 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 that my job is going to pay enough. And I just want to show you that I, I actually outlined my monthly salary I just want to show you that I'm going to have enough to give you, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the, this dress at this time, and I have enough here from this savings account to be able to cover it, and you're going to be able to finish your, you know, I don't know, nursing degree, and I actually worked the whole thing out, and, and we're doing great, and I've got money coming in from this thing, and I've got a couple stocks and bonds, I could tell you all about them, there's, a great, there's a great rates on them, I just wanted to, that you should know that. Now, if he starts going on this whole rant about he's got it all figured out, his responsibilities, what is she going to say? Um, She's probably, you know, as, as a nice, you know, wonderful girl would say, you know, I, I really appreciate all this. I have to tell you, I really do appreciate this, but this is not quite the time and the place. I, you know, I was actually hoping we we're going to do something maybe beyond just talk crunch numbers right now. There's something else that's here. There's something that else that I'm looking for, not just that you're going to be a guy that's going to fulfill your responsibilities. Now fast forward 20 years, and we, we wish this couple that they should have a beautiful marriage, but sometimes in life things get challenging and difficult as they, as they do, and at a certain point this couple just feels distant. And through a different sequence of events, she says, you know, maybe we should go talk to somebody like, uh, and he's like, oh, you know, oh, she told on me, fine. And they go and, it can go from either side, by the way. And maybe the therapist or the rabbi is there and saying like, you know, so who wants to start? Like, you know, how, how can I help? And they don't know how to quite describe it. And 
my wife's not happy. I don't know. I'm, I'm a good guy. I, you know, I, I do the carpool and I, I don't, I take care of you. And I, you know, I, I never miss your birthday or anniversary. Maybe one time, but, but I really, I'm, I'm there for you. And, uh, you know, I, I provide, I give you a new Lexus. You don't like your Lexus. I take you on vacations. No, like, what's wrong? I take out the garbage. And, and she'll probably say something along the lines of, and it can go either way, like I mentioned. I appreciate these things. I appreciate you taking out the garbage. I appreciate you. You might be a nice guy and a good father, but you don't look at me like you looked at me under the chuppah. The fire, the light in your eyes, the passion for me, somehow through life has become dimmed. And it's true that we're, that we're married, but, but, but it's not like it used to be. And somehow through life, the light of when we were together under the chuppah, and I was looking for something, and even in the Cheder Yichudum, I was looking for something. I didn't get involved in this marriage for this. I had something else in mind also. Not just the details and not just the responsibilities. I had something beyond in mind. What's that beyond? That's called light. That's what we call light. Or something. That's more than the sum total of what you have to do. That's what I had in mind. When we got involved in this whole marriage. You know, we have a body and a soul, my friends. The body is something you can see. The body is identifiable, 613, limbs and major blood vessels, etc. And the body does a lot of stuff. But you know you have something else inside called the soul. That's the light that's inside. And it's sad because a lot of people don't see that. They just see a bunch of bodies bumping around. But there's a soul. There's a light that's inside. It's the light of the soul. You know, the body is something that's concealed because it's this and it's not something else. But the soul is something that reveals. It's light. Light reveals. And I want to tell you something about Yavam. We have to go back to the beginning of the Torah. The Torah says, Bereshis bar lakim esa shemayim esa arts. In the beginning Hashem created heavens and earth. And the arts was toyev avayu. It was empty, it was desolate. V'chayshech al p'nei sahayim. And it was dark. It was dark on the depths. What's that darkness? So the sages say that darkness is referring to the ancient Greeks. What was so dark? W- weren't they filled with light? Didn't they bring us philosophy? And weren't they trying to teach us wonderful things? What's, what, what, what's so dark? What was so dark? But that world, you know, what's dark is, I could go through all the motions, but if it has no inner meaning, it's very dark. I could go through all the motions of being a religious person, but if there's no relationship, it's dark. I can go through all the motions of being married to my wife and even be a good guy and provide and do all that stuff that good guys are supposed to do. But if it's not alive, I could be having dinner with her. I could not even be on my phone, except it's in my pocket, silent, buzz. And if, and she'll know, she'll feel that, hey, come on, you're not, you're not. He said, what do you mean I'm with you? Look, I'm, I can say back every word you just said. That's the classic one. I can say back exactly, yeah, but you're not listening. What do you mean? I, I, I proved it to you that I just, I, I, I'm listening. No, no, you might, you, you're not listening. You're not listening. There's not, there's no light here. You might physically, but it's dark. There's something dark. I want to tell you a secret, my friends. You know Adam in the garden? He was in the garden for 36 hours. Do you guys know that? 12 hours before Shabbos. Hashem said you could stay in the garden another 12 hours of Shabbos night, another 12 hours of Shabbos day, and then he had to leave the garden. You know, in the garden there was something special. You know what it was? It was a light. It's called the Oragonas, called the hidden light. There's a special light in the garden. And you know what Adam could do with that light? That was a light that you could see from one end of the world to the other. Mabit Nesoifa, Oyel Mat Adam could see. He could see everything. He could see into things. 
He could see past all the fake news, see past everything. He saw into things. It was a light of relationship, a light of depth. It was a light that could literally project you. You could do anything. You could see everything. You knew things. You understood things. It was a light that was warm. It was a light of a relationship. And that light was shining in the garden for 36 hours. Even the word, the Yara Lakim is Orki Toiv, and he saw the light that it was good. Toiv, we have Messira Toiv is, is Tess, right? Tess of the Gemacho 9, that there's four, four little crowns. Usually there's only three, four. What's four times nine? 36. 36. The 36 hours of this light on Toiv, on the Orki Toiv, the special hidden light. And you know, this light was very powerful. Hashem didn't want this light to be taken by the wicked people. Hashem said, I see into the future. Who is there? The Dor, Hamabu, the people of the flood. That they would take this light and they would abuse it. If you could see into the future, you could see over the course, through the world, you could go spy on people, God forbid. You could do bad things. If the wicked people get this light, and also the Dor Flaga, the ones of the great, to build the tower, the tower of Babylon, to go fight God. If they get this light, they could destroy the whole world. They could spy, they could do anything. Be careful. I don't want them to get this light. So what did Hashem do? He took this light and he hid it. That's what's called the Or HaGanuz. He hid it. Do you know where he hid it? So it says he hid it in the Torah. First it says he hid it for the Tzadikim. For the righteous in the times of Mashiach, this light is going to come back out. It's going to sparkle. We're going to see this light. And this light, we're going to use this light for relationships. That's why Mashiach comes. It's not going to be a husband and wife on their things together. They're actually going to be talking deeply. You're going to have no more this thing where, where, where people aren't getting it. They're not getting what it means to be deeply connected. They're going to actually be able to communicate on a profound level because they see the light in each other. They're going to look beyond the surface of life. The Yavanim, the Greeks said, just see everything on the surface. Don't go deeper. By the way, they even said you could learn Torah. They wanted the Torah translated to Greek, by the way, right? They said you could learn the Torah. But just don't tell me that a Shem is inside the Torah. You know what the Torah is? It's another subject in university. And you can become a professor. You have 5,000 PhDs in, in Talmud. But don't tell me for one second that God is inside the Torah. Because that's already the light. A Shem is like the ore. Hashem is the light. You know, Hashem is like the soul of the world. You can learn the Torah. And you can even keep Shabbos. What do you mean? I thought that you couldn't keep Shabbos. They said you can keep Shabbos, but you know what Shabbos should look like? You sit there. Don't do that. That's also. Don't do that. I think that's also on Shabbos. You know, let's do that. Prohibited. Uh, like that, like that. How many people grew up like that? You can't do that on Shabbos. You can't do it on Shabbos. So what can I do? We don't talk about that. We just talk about a lot about what you can't do. You've got to learn everything about what you can't do. You have to know that also. But what about the light? What about the light of Shabbos? You saw it from Zukra. I know you did. The light of Shabbos, right? He's not just telling you what you can't do. He'll tell you that also. But all of a sudden you see, wow, there's a light. There's an ore. There's a relationship, right? There's something here that I never, I never saw this. Because you know why? He's giving you the oragonas. That's the hidden light. And the Greeks said, you can't have that light. Because that light means you're going to connect. That light means there's going to be a relationship. You can't have that light. You can't have that light. So you know what? When we light the Hanukkah candles, you know how many candles we light? One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight is 36. Those candles, every candle you light, is another one of the lights of the Oregonas. Every candle you light, you're bringing that light into this world. You bring the candles, mamish, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way from the highest, highest place. You're bringing that light here. That light that lets you see across the universe. That light of relationship, that light that's warm, that light that connects. This is what it's all about. And you know, this light is everything. This light, the light of Hanukkah, all it takes is one little candle. One little light will give you everything you need. Because one little bit of eternity gives you everything. Gives you everything. When you look into the candles, you're going to see. You're going to see into the times of Mashiach. You're going to see everything. You're going to see everything. Everything that ever was will be everything. But what it's really all about. And you know, what's Hanukkah? 
Chanukah is the same word, chinuch. What's chinuch mean? Education. Education. Because to be mechanech, what's what, what, you know, you can't just go into the Messianic era. It's not going to work out so well. You got to be educated how to get ready. You know, before you come into Buckingham Palace, you're like, you have this thing, you got to be, you know, protocols. You got to know what to do. You know, we can't just go into the times of Mashiach. We need to be educated. So what's the education? What's the chinuch? It's Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the chinuch. It's teaching me. It's teaching me about this light. And chinuch really means Hanukkah and is bad to pull something out. Chanukah is when you pull the light out of your friends. You pull the light out of your loved ones. Chanukah is when you don't see people superficial anymore. Chanukah is, I could get lost in the darkness, right? Just see, yeah, he's this guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the outside. Chanukah is, no, I go all the way in. I see your soul. And I'm pulling it out. I want to see it. It's, it's the literally, when you look at the candles, that's why the tzaddikim would look at their candles five, six, seven, eight hours. They'd be glued to the candle. They wouldn't move. You think I'm, you think I'm kidding? The tzaddikim would sit by their candles, just looking at the candles, pulling the hidden light, pulling the light of Mashiach to now. And that's why it's also in the Torah. Because how many Masechtas are there? There's 36 Masechtas. It's hiding in the Torah. Either you can learn the Torah like an academic exercise, like the Yivan would say, go get a, get a PhD in, in, in Talmudic learning. And then they come to Israel, and they become, you know, it's great preparation for law school. You think that's what this, was, what this is all about? Yeah, yeah, in Korea, they also learn, you know, Talmud. Makes you smart. The Jews, I heard that, that they're smart because they have this thing called the Talmud. You think that's what it's all about? It's about a relationship. It's about the or. It's about light. Darkness means I don't see a relationship anymore. You know, darkness, does darkness take something away? If I turn the lights off, does this go away? It doesn't, doesn't leave reality. You just can't see it. Yovan said, I'm going to turn off the lights. You won't see God. He never took him away but I'm going to obscure him, that you don't see him. And that's why you know, the Yavonim had a very funny thing. They told us, this is one of their strange decrees, that we had to take our shores, we had to take our oxen, and we saw, we saw a few today with the Hebrew. You have to take the shofar, the head of the ox, the, the horns of the ox. Kiss for the al You know what we had to write on that? We have no portion in the God of Israel. What does that mean? What does it mean to write? It's a very funny thing. Take all your oxes, write it like in a Sharpie marker on the horn of the ox. Because you know what it means? What's the care in Ashur? It's your physical body. We're the shore. This is us. The care is your highest faculties. It's your brain. That your brain should say, you know, I can do all the mitzvahs. But I don't actually have a shyness to God. I can do all the mitzvahs. I can be a religious person. But with God, like, ask a guy, how much do you think about Hashem in your life? If he says, I'm too busy learning Gemara to think about God, it means that the Greeks got you. They got you. We'll save you, don't worry. It means that something's going on. You ask a guy in the train, so bro, like, do you thought about Hashem? You know, God Hashem? If not, it's not good. It means it's something in the Karen ashore. And by the way, you know what else? They used to use the horns for baby bottles. So the children would drink the milk out of the horn. And as they're drinking the milk, they're looking on the side and they're saying, I don't have a portion in the God of Israel. Which means, I could do all the mitzvahs, but there's no Hashem. It comes Hanukkah, and all of a sudden you get it all back. And that's what it says, Lahadlik Ner Hanukkah. Those letters, Lahadlik Ner Hanukkah, is the Nachal, is the river we're talking about. And you like, you're picturing the river, you're picturing an amazing blessing of Hashem coming into my life. There's nothing but you, Hashem. There's nothing but you. Chanukah, when I light that candle, I see you, Hashem. This is the real story of Chanukah. It's the fight against the darkness of the world. That's why it's in the darkest time of the year. We light it below 10th fog, very dark. I think it's dark right now. Dark means the world is trying to tell you, don't think you have a relationship with God. Don't think you're actually feeling close to God. Oh yeah, that's it. Like, you know, it's like nice stuff. It's nice and all, but it's not really real. Do you ever hear that in your head? You know, it's nice, but it's not that... I don't actually, you know, I don't actually have a connection to Hashem. Hanukkah comes, and all of a sudden, all the darkness goes away. Hashem, you were there the whole time. You are there the whole time. This is what it's all about. And the last thing you just have to know is why didn't the Greeks find that one jar? They found all the other jars, 
Why didn't they find that last one? Says the Chudush Yerim. It was right in front of their nose. So why didn't they see it? It was right there. It was sitting on the floor. Why didn't they see it? Because you know what that jar represents? It represents your soul. They could never see it. They could never find it. It's untouchable. It's pure. But the Chayis Mishal Kain Gadol, it has the high priest. The high priest means that place inside you that guards your purity. That no matter what happened in a person's life, no matter how dark things got, he is pure. He can never be touched. And on Hanukkah, you find that jar of oil inside of you and you're going to light it up. I don't mean a, you know, a cone, you understand, a 24 inch. I mean, you're going to light up your soul, the real stuff. The real stuff you're going to light up. And you're going to see that light bursting out. You're going to see who you really are. You're going to be able to see from one end of the world to the other. You're going to see everything. You're going to see everything. You're going to see that Hashem is real in your life. We should be zayichah to this. We should be able to see the light. This is the real story of Hanukkah. It's to see the light of our souls. To see the light of Hashem. And that Hashem is close to us. And when we look at the one that we love deep in her eyes, we're going to be able to say, that I see who you are. I see you. I love you. That I can look in your eyes. And I can tell you how much I love you. And I, and I just want to grow and know everything about you. And I could say that to Hashem and look in his eyes, Kavi Yochel on Hanukkah, and say, Hashem, I want to be with you forever. We should be Zoycha, this Hanukkah, to build the Beis Amikdash with Mashiach Tzidkenu, Ben Herbi, Amen. 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 Amen.